Are you new or old to Rise of Kingdoms and trying to figure out which unit type is best for you? Well, join me as I break them all down. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another Rise of Kingdoms gameplay episode from your very own Shappy Gaming. Today, we are going to be talking about a topic near and dear to my heart that is essential for every Rise of Kingdoms player in the game today, and that is unit types. There are four primary units in Rise of Kingdoms, and we're going to be covering the three main ones, the best civilizations for them, the best commanders for them, and which you should be using, whether we're talking early game or late game, and the special advantages of all of them. So first things first, the four unit types in Rise of Kingdoms are infantry, which associates with the barrack structure, cavalry, which associates with the stable structure, archers, which associate with the archery range, and siege units, which associate with the siege workshop. For all intents and purposes, we are primarily going to be talking about the three main unit types today, and that is infantry, archers, and cavalry. Siege are mostly irrelevant, primarily for gathering, and so they won't really be covered in today's video. Now, early on in the game, you can choose which civilization you want to use, and each civilization has specific buffs for every single unit type. So as you can see, if we look at Germany, for example, you get a cavalry buff of 5%. You also get a special unit of Teutonic Knight for Germany, which has specific buffs to that unit type. For Rome, on the other hand, you get infantry defense. So the civilization that you choose does have some input on which unit you should be using. But realistically, you can change your civilization pretty much whenever you want, and so you should pick your unit based upon how you want to play in Rise of Kingdoms. So, why would you pick one unit over another? First things first is that infantry deal more damage to cavalry. Rise of Kingdoms is like a rock, paper, scissors. So infantry deal more damage to cavalry, archers deal more damage to infantry, and cavalry deal more damage to archers. So this is something very, very important to keep in mind as we talk through this. Now, the commanders do vary depending upon whether you're in early game or late game. And so for all intents and purposes, that buff is fairly consistent. I do know commanders change this as the game goes into Season of Conquest, but typically that's how you want to think of different troop types. So you do want to pick your civilization based upon which troop type you intend to play with. For example, if you want to be infantry, you might consider the Viking civilization. If you want to be cavalry, you might consider Spain. Now, these are not necessarily the best civilizations for you. I do have a video that I'm gonna link on the top right side of your screen now, which you can go check out, which breaks down all the civilizations in depth, whether you're starting or late game. But for all intents and purposes, if you're cavalry, the main civilization I'm gonna recommend for you is probably going to be Germany, namely because of the cavalry attack buff and the Teutonic Knights do have higher defense, I believe, than attack. Additionally, you get the troop training speed, which is phenomenal, and AP recovery of 10%. So overall, really, really great for cavalry. If you're infantry, typically you're going to want to go for France because the throwing axemen have the highest health of all infantry types, and the troop health buff of 3% goes across all of your different troop types. Plus, you get this sweet hospital healing buff. If you are archers, you have a little bit more flexibility, but typically I suggest for archers that you go for the Ottoman Empire because you get increased archer health, the Janissary unit is pretty awesome, and you get troop march speed, which is really, really important when we talk about which troop type you wanna use. Also, active skill damage is essential because most of the archer commanders are nukers. So, let's talk about why you would choose one unit type over another. And the best unit, for how you play in Rise of Kingdoms. Now, the advantage of archers is that they are really good against infantry. Now, the challenge with archers is that early on in the game, there really aren't terribly many archer commanders that are accessible. So let's talk about that. The archer commanders that are really accessible earlier on in the game are gonna be predominantly epics, although there are a couple of legendaries. So we'll cover those as well. So. For archers, you have the option of Imatep, Kusunoki, and Herman. These are really your, your primary archer commanders earlier on in the game. And all of these commanders have different benefits. So if you are thinking, hey, I might wanna play archers, 
you primarily will likely want to run, I think, Herman and Emetep as the pairing. Now, both of these are fairly good commanders, but again, there are only really three archer commanders earlier on in the game, which is kind of inaccessible. There is Kiera, but she takes a long time to level up and you can't use universal heads on her. So for all intents and purposes, she's kind of out. So you do have some decent archer commanders. Personally, my favorite early in the game are going to be Herman and Imhotep, namely because Imhotep has been recently added and he has some awesome skills. Also early on in the game, if you're thinking of playing archers, you may want to go with Egypt because the buffs for growth are also pretty good. So those are the archer commanders. Typically, if you are a low spender or a free to play, I would recommend not investing in archers early on in the game. The reason for this is that the majority of commanders that are accessible prior to KVK1 are not terribly viable long term. So you have Tamiris, who's great, but again, not terribly useful, and she's season two exclusive. So if you're talking season one, the only commander that you will have access to is actually going to be YSG, and he's from Wheel. And then you also have Tutmos, who is new and recently added to the game. And you have El Cid, who is not terribly useful, especially early on. You do get Edward in season two, but again, he is not useful late game, not viable. So for archers, if you're a low spender, typically I would recommend you stay away from archers. And there are a couple reasons for this. As I mentioned earlier, archers are weak to cavalry. Cavalry are the fastest unit type in the game pretty much across the board. And what this means is that you will likely be getting targeted and chased down by cavalry, and you can't really run away from them as archers. Also, as I said, the archer commanders early game are not terribly strong. YSG is useful all the way into Season of Conquest, but he's pretty much the only archer commander that is going to be viable into such late game. Edward is not. Tamiris, she might be if you are planning on spending a lot of money, Otherwise, she's really not going to be terribly viable late game. You do get Ramses in Season of Conquest, but at this juncture, he's probably not one that I wouldn't recommend investing in for long-term use. So archers are not going to be terribly viable within the first really 180 days of the game. Now let's talk about the next unit type, which is infantry. Infantry early game is incredibly strong. and You may have heard other content creators like Chisgle recommend that you go to infantry if you are a free-to-play player. And there are a couple of reasons for that. You get some really strong infantry commanders very earlier in the game. For example, Richard I. Richard I is a great infantry commander with really strong buffs, and he's accessible primarily from the Wheel of Fortune. If you are wondering what the Wheel of Fortune is, I have a guide on the top right for you as well. So early game, infantry is actually pretty strong, and it does counter cavalry, which means in most cases, if you're getting chased down, you can stand and fight, whereas with archers, you really can't do that. Now, Infantry is weak to archers, but march speeds are fairly equivalent between the two, so you likely won't get chased down by archers quite as much. Additionally, infantry is typically kind of a tankier set, which means if you are getting swarmed, you will be able to withstand a lot of these attacks. The other reason why infantry are so good, both early game and late game, is that a lot of the commanders are really, really accessible. So you get Martel Richard early on, which is phenomenal, and you can also run YSG with Richard, if you decide that you're going to invest in wheel. However, for most people, one of the best early pairs is Alex Richard, which is almost undefeatable in most cases early game. As we talk about late game and how you're playing, infantry has some really versatile commanders. You get Guan Yu, you get Scipio, who is one of the best commanders in the game. We now have Sargon, who's recently been introduced. And as of right now, making this video, Infantry is the Rally and Garrison meta. So if the, you are planning on playing Rally or Garrison, it may make sense for you to actually invest in Infantry. Now for Archers, it is one of the best Rally pairs if you invest in Henry, but that is way later on in the game. So if you're first starting out, you're thinking which unit type you wanna specialize in, you can specialize in Infantry early on and then switch to Archers later on if you so choose. But early game, I would probably recommend not specializing in archers, with the exception of maybe maxing YSG. Now, the other reason why infantry units are so great is that, as I mentioned earlier, they're very tanky. So you can counter most cavalry marches, and you can still withstand a lot of damage, and there's fairly good equipment for them. So equipment is essential to the game. 
for archers, you do have really good equipment as well. So if we take a look at some of the early game equipment for archers, you've got Golden Age, which gives you phenomenal defense, and you have, um, what else? And you have the Revival Plate, which gives you good attack, and there's a nice set that's fairly accessible. You've got the Revival Helm, and you've got the Revival Pants, which I am using even into late game. So as you can see, I am still using the Revival set on my archers today. So you do have a lot of defense with the archer set. With infantry, however, early game, some of the equipment is not as, as good. You have Witch's Lineage, which gives you infantry attack, but typically you want defense or health on your infantry. You also have Ian's Choice, or Quinn's Soul, which also gives you infantry attack, which is, again, not really what you're looking for. You do have fairly good equipment, though. You get the Shield, which is viable even into late game, and you can set up your set marches, really, to build health and defense. And as you get into legendary gear, there is some really great gear for infantry, whereas for archers, it's a little bit more difficult. Now, for the unit type that I am most a fan of, long-term and early game, it's going to have to be cavalry. And there are a lot of different reasons for this. Cavalry counters archers. Yes, we know that. However, the reason that cavalry are so strong, both early and late game, comes down to their march speed. So march speed with cavalry is really essential pretty much whenever you're playing the game. And the reason for that is that you can chase down archer marches or infantry marches if they're low health. The other advantage to this is that you can run away, which if you're a low spender or free to play is extraordinarily useful. If you can run away from these battles that you think you might lose, cavalry are going to be really viable for you long term and into the game. Additionally, there are some great civilizations for cavalry. As you heard me mention earlier, I really like Germany. There are also other civilizations you can use. You can use Arabia which gives you damage to barbarians and increases damage dealt by rallied armies. So if you're a rally leader, Arabia is pretty good. So overall, cavalry are fairly good early on in the game, and there are great commanders for them. So if we take a look at the cavalry commanders in early game, you have Sao Sao, who is phenomenal early and fairly late into the game, though once you get into Season of Conquest, he becomes less useful. You have Saladin, which is a Season 2 commander, who you can use at 5551 and still deal immense damage. As we talk about other late game commanders that you can use, we also have William, who is Season of Conquest, but again, is a budget commander of 5551. Typically, archers and infantry do not have the same unmax ability that cavalry marches do. Uh, you also have Joan, another 5515 commander, and Nevsky, who can be used very effectively at 5551. You do have some of that flexibility with Guan, but with other commanders like Harold or Sargon, you're really not going to have the same flexibility. Overall, I hope that this has been helpful, but cavalry also have the best equipment. And this is pretty much across the board. As you can see, cavalry health is prevalent in almost every single set. And I can show you the late game set for cavalry that I'm using, which gives you an enormous amount of health and defense, which again, you heard me say, is what you're primarily shooting for on your cavalry marches. So I hope that this has been helpful and it's given you a little bit of insight into which commanders you want to use and which troop type you want to be using, both early and late game. The last benefit for cavalry is that there is Minamoto, who you can buy if you're spending earlier on in the game, and you can max him for around $350. Minamoto and Sao Sao are both incredibly viable for barbarian forts, barbarians, and fighting earlier on in the game, and they are useful throughout the duration of your time playing Rise of Kingdoms. Hopefully this has been insightful. If it has, be sure to hit that subscribe button right over there, bottom right-hand corner, and hit the bell so you get notified when new episodes come out. If you have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, and I do respond to every comment on my videos. Thank you. Shappy out.